Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to give you the tools you need to start up a training program for your cleaning staff. If you already have a training program, don't worry because the same tips and methods work for improving your current program as well. Don't worry about taking notes. We'll be offering you a companion ebook to download and this webinar will be available to view later. To start things off, I'd like to get a sense of how many of you already have some sort of formal training program for your cleaning staff. Do you have a training program that's written down and used for all new staff? While we wait for your responses, let's take a quick look at why training is so necessary. I'm sure you already know why training is essential on an everyday practical level. But one of the first things we talk about when setting up a training program is making a business case for it. In other words, how do you convince the boss, even if the boss is you, that a training program is worth the time and effort to set up? Let's look at four facts. Turnover in the cleaning industry is estimated to be 200%. Recent studies have shown a strong correlation between pro providing workers with training and reducing turnover. Recruiting and training new workers is estimated to cost $1,000 per person. Employees are three times more likely to be injured within the first month of work. So an easy way to summarize a lack of training can lead to good people getting frustrated and leaving. It can lead to more on the job accidents. All of this costs time, money, and manpower. Okay, let's look at our survey results. It looks like most of you do have some kind of formal training program. That's great. Even if you're not satisfied with your current program, you have somewhere to start. Of course, you might also decide to start from scratch after we're done. To start things out, you'll want to evaluate what your current training needs are. We've provided a worksheet to help you work through this. You can download that now or just follow along with everything on the screen and grab it later. The first step is to list out all the critical tasks that your staff performs. Some of these might be daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly. Try to be thorough. If you're a facility manager, you might delegate this task to a supervisor or have them help you complete it. If you're using our worksheet, you might need to print out more than one copy of the page to write down all your tasks. These can be pretty general for right now. For example, clean the bathrooms, clean the walkways, wash the exterior windows, and take out the trash are good examples. Next, just think about how you'd currently rate how well you're doing each task. Try to be honest as possible. Remember, the idea behind this isn't to make you or your staff feel bad. It's just to be realistic about where you are now so you can get better. Everyone has areas they can improve in. For our worksheet, we've used a scale of one to five, five being the best and one meaning major improvement is needed. If you're working with someone else to do this, you might make your rating separately and then compare results. For now, every task that you rated yourself low on currently, try to think of why you gave it this rating. For instance, you might consider the cleanliness of your restrooms lower because the mirrors are often streaked or dirt gets stuck in the corners. Maybe a task like cleaning exterior windows is rated lower because they are forgotten. Now, you're going to turn to the next page in the worksheet. You'll want to copy this page so you have a clean copy for each critical task that you gave a low rating. Fill out the task and the main issues from the first sheet. Then write out each step involved in completing that task. Okay, before we go any further, I wanna acknowledge that this might seem like a lot of work and well, that's because it is. Take your time and be thorough when you do this. Ask others for help or get their input. 
You want this task list to be the best it can be, but don't worry because we're providing you resources to help. For the next step, we want to take a look at the list you made. First, try to imagine you're a new employee. Assume they are completely new to cleaning. Look at that list. Would they understand what you were talking about? Have you forgotten some info? Second, consult the instructional and training materials that your cleaning manufacturer has provided. At Envirox, we offer videos, wall charts, and training cards on lanyards to help you with your training. As an example, we're going to watch a short video on restroom cleaning with our H2 Orange 2 Hyper Concentrate 112 product. Proper restroom cleaning eliminates the source of odors and restores your restrooms to their cleanest state. Today we'll learn how to clean a restroom with H2 Orange 2 Hyper Concentrate 112. This product cleans everything in your restrooms, from glass to grout to fixtures. To clean restrooms, you'll need pump-up sprayer filled with red heavy-duty, green light-duty spray bottle, green light-duty in a bucket and mop, dust mop or broom and dustpan, restocking supplies, trash can liners, paper towel or microfiber towels, high duster, wet floor sign. We'll be following these simple steps to restroom cleaning. We'll use red heavy duty on all fixtures and heavy touch points and green light duty on all glass and stainless steel. Step one, clear the restroom. Knock on the door and announce yourself. If you have one, place a restroom close sign outside of restroom to restrict outside access. Step two, put on gloves. Put on gloves before starting any work. Make sure to change gloves frequently if you've touched contaminated areas. Don't go from cleaning the toilets to cleaning touch points with the same gloves. Step three, spray down toilet area and counters. Use pump up sprayer of heavy duty red to thoroughly spray down toilets, urinals, beneath the toilet area, the walls behind the toilets, partitions, feminine hygiene trash cans, counters, sinks, and high contact areas like door locks and handles. Leave these wet. You're giving the product time to work. Step four, dust. Use your high duster to clean high shelving and surfaces, paying close attention to vents, air returns, and window sills. Dust from top to bottom, working from the left to the right. Step five, sweep the floor. Pick up all loose trash and sweep floors thoroughly, taking care to get into corners. Step six, remove trash. Remove full trash bags and replace with fresh liners. Step seven, clean glass. Use the light duty green in a spray bottle to clean glass, mirrors, stainless steel, and all other shiny surfaces. Use clean paper towels or microfibers on mirrors to ensure streak-free results. If streaks occur, clean mirror with red heavy-duty dilution to remove residue. Then resume daily cleaning with light-duty green. Step 8. Clean counters and sinks. By now, the heavy-duty red should have sat for at least 5 minutes. Wipe down all counters and sinks. Once the surface has been cleaned, spray it again with red heavy duty and leave wet for five minutes to get the sanitizer virucidal kill claims. Step nine, clean toilet area. Detail and dry all toilets and urinal areas. Swab toilet bowls and wipe toilets clean. Wipe down high contact areas like door handles. Make sure you use a different towel for touch points and toilets. Again, once the surface has been cleaned, Spray it with red heavy duty and leave wet for five minutes to get the sanitizer virucidal kill claims. Step 10, stock the restroom. Replenish toilet paper, hand soap, and paper towel dispensers. Step 11, mop. Place wet floor signs up. With your mop bucket of light duty green, mop the edges of the restroom, then mop the entire floor thoroughly. Regularly wring out your mop and change the water when it's dirty. Leave wet floor sign in place until floor is completely dry. Thanks for watching. For additional support, 
please call us at 800-281-9604. Okay, let's look at an example using our worksheet. Thinking about the video, what can we can identify a few things that weren't quite right about our initial list. One, you'll want to specify what dilution of the product should be used in the mop water. Calling out details like this it helps essentially if you're using a multi-purpose product with different dilutions for different tasks. Two, cleaning staff should put out a wet floor sign before starting work. Three, you'll want to know any high touch points that might need a heavier duty solution like handles or doorknobs. There are a couple more things that could be fixed on this list. You can find those in the ebook we'll offer at the end of the webinar. Now, look at each task's steps and assign, when relevant, what training problem might be at the root of the issues you've identified. We have a chart in the ebook to get you started, but let's look at our example here. If you have streaked mirrors, it might be that you're using a stronger dilution of the product than you need to. If floors are sticky, then you might be using too much product in mop water. If tasks are just regularly forgotten, you might not have communicated your expectations clearly. It's also possible some tasks happen only monthly, quarterly, or yearly and are quickly forgotten if not written down somewhere. Now here's where our paths will diverge. For those of you who are setting up a training program from scratch, you'll have an extra step. You'll want to go back and fill out a form for all the remaining tasks you identified. This includes the duties where you actually rated yourself well. Now it might be that you found some fantastic resources already that you're planning to use for these other tasks and don't feel the need to run through all of them, especially if you think you're already doing a great job with them. As with everything in this webinar, we just want to give you a suggested systematic way of setting up a training program. So it's just our recommendation that you go through this extra step. For those of you who have a training program you're looking to improve, you can just proceed to the next step. So now we're all back on the same page. We're ready to start finding or creating the training materials that are right for our particular needs. We're prepared to evaluate existing training programs and create our own materials as needed. There are four main types of resources available to you. YouTube. The video streaming service has a wealth of information, including instructional videos. Downloads. Search for downloadable PDFs that you can print off. This might include proper usage instructions, wall charts, or more. Ordered materials. Check with your distributor to see if they have any materials they can send you with your next order of cleaning products or accessories. You can also request materials by emailing enviroxinfo at enviroxclean.com. Training programs. There are training programs out there for custodial staff. Some are purchased either as complete programs or a la carte for specific cleaning solutions. ISSA also offers certification programs as well. We have a list of some of these programs on the resources page of our ebook and at www.enviroxclean.com slash training program. Remember, if you have to create your own materials, the content is more important than the look of it. A typed written sheet of instructions for each task is a great start. If you clean a school, you might even consider seeing if the mass media or graphic design teacher might create a class project to design your custom training materials. One piece that you're almost certainly going to have to create is your training or onboarding schedule. 
Here are some features that every training schedule should have. One, specific dates on which the employee is expected to complete certain aspects of the training. Two, the tasks to be completed on each training day should be clearly spelled out. Three, the priority the first day should be to familiarize new employees with the facility, their coworkers, and the location of equipment. This is just about helping them to get oriented with their new job. Four, split training between classroom training and on-the-job training. By classroom training, we mean any training, such as videos, info sheet, etc., where the trainee is focused on absorbing the information. On-the-job training is when the employee uses what they've learned to accomplish a task. And lastly, be sure to inc incorporate mentorship if able. Now it's time to put your training into practice. This is pretty self-explanatory, but here are important points to remember. Again, start your training off with a tour of the facility and meeting any relevant staff. Make sure they, they know they aren't expected to remember everyone's name right off the bat. Show trainees where the break room, bathrooms are all located. Make it clear that questions are welcomed and expected. Everyone would rather answer a question in the short term than have something done incorrectly in the future. Be sure that whoever is acting as the primary trainer or is mentoring a new employee has time to do it properly. Make adjustments to their schedule and expectations as needed. Make sure any other employees who are assisting in the training have a good knowledge of all the proper techniques and are not teaching any shortcuts and fully understand their responsibilities in the overall training. To close things out, we're going to start off by offering the companion ebook for this webinar. In this, you'll find everything we discussed here, as well as some expanded topics too including a section devoted on ongoing training. For the custodians of the world, learning is something that never really ends. The main advantages of ongoing training, keeping up with industry changes, cleaning technology moves on. The surfaces janitors clean also change and require new cleaning techniques and products connecting learning with job advancement and satisfaction. When an organization shows interest in continuing education for their employees, job satisfaction goes up. Maintaining your edge. Whether you're an in-house cleaning staff or a BSC, facilities have other options. Keep all your team up to date on the latest cleaning techniques, technology, and best practices. This way, you help assure your organization or clients that you're experts in the field. Thank you once again for joining our webinar. This is a big topic, but we hope we've started you down the right path and given you some tools to either start your formal training program for your cleaning staff or improve your current one. You can access all the materials from this webinar by visiting www www.enviroxclean.com slash training program. We look forward to seeing you next time.